reserve currency? The reserve currency is the currency that the rest of the world prices its goods and services in. So as a U.S. dollar, um, oil is priced in U.S. dollars per barrel. Gold is priced in U.S. dollars per troy ounce. Uh, almost everything that ships globally is priced in U.S. dollars. That makes the holder uh, or the uh, domicile of the U.S. currency very, very powerful because when they change the valuation of their currency, um, either by mistake or on purpose, uh, it gives them significant control over commerce, over um, geopolitics around the world. So let's suppose the U.S. borrows a whole lot of money, trillions of dollars. True fact. And the U.S. Um, economy doesn't generate enough activity to actually pay back this loan. True fact. The U.S. can default on their loans outright, an accounting default, and just say, I'm not going to pay you. The U.S. has not done that recently. Or they could just not pay you in a different way. So what they do is, you borrowed a million dollars out of a $10 million pie, you own 10% of the U.S. debt, the U.S. has to pay you 10% on that interest, right? Which is, say, $100,000. The U.S. doesn't want to pay it. So what they do is they print another million dollars. So they can now pay you that 10%. You'll get it, but you're getting half the value of what you lent out. So you're like, ah. But the U.S. is like, that's what happens. We're the reserve currency printer. We're the kings. That's why everybody is striving to become the reserve currency. Now, there's a catch-22 here. When you print money, you are not making more money. You're making more pieces of paper. I order a pizza. You slice the pizza in four pieces. We all eat. Everybody comes and joins the pizza pie party. I can order more pizza and feed everybody, or I can act like the U.S. dollar. I mean, like the U.S. and U.S. Treasury. So I take my pizza, and I take the four slices, and I check each slice into three pieces. Now I have 12 pieces, okay? So now I feed 12 people with that same pie. Did I give any more pie out? No, I just saw smaller slices. The U.S. Treasury, the U.S. can now feed this entire hotel. I just take little tiny slivers of pie. Now I have 196 pieces. I feed everybody. I'm big guy. I'm all popular. And so they realize I'm very hungry. I just barely taste pizza. The reason is I gave out smaller pieces of pie, pizza pie. I, I gave everybody food, but the actual economic value is very slim. And the temptation to print is irresistible. Irresistible. Every country that has had reserve currency status, as a matter of fact, every country that's had the ability to print has printed and they have destroyed the value of the currency. The U.S. dollar has fallen in value um, in terms of purchasing power nominally about 97 percent. 97 percent. So those detractors of Bitcoin that say it's a horrible store of value, Bitcoin was launched at roughly 0.09 cents per Bitcoin. So let's round it off to a penny. We round it off a lot. Bitcoin had a very rough month. Bitcoin is still trading at about $7,000 per coin, up from less than one penny, right, over the last nine years. The U.S. dollar has fell 97%. The difference is the U.S. dollar is very steady in its fall. Bitcoin is very volatile. At the end of the day, you can have three cents on a dollar that you um, put into the U.S. dollar, or you can have $90,000 into that penny you put into Bitcoin. Which would you rather have? And believe it or not, I'm not even pro-Bitcoin. But the facts are the facts. Au revoir.